the Grand Canyon, one of the most glorious of the most uh, amazing sights in the world. And uh, you're looking 5,000 feet uh, down into the gorge, and there's the river at the bottom. Uh, that's the thing we're going to paddle. And here are the rafts all lined up and ready to go, and they're um, uh, going to paddle the Grand Canyon. Those are the 16-man rafts. Those are the 12-man rafts. And that is Georgia White, the first person to ever take tourists down the Grand Canyon. And she did that for about 20 years. The first rapid is Soak Creek. The most interesting thing for an Eastern paddler is the power of the water. Uh, we expect everything, every time there's a white cap, the board, water's gonna be a back curler and it's going to stop the boat. Well, the, the, the water in the Grand Canyon is so enormous that what it does is just pushes you through these white caps. And here comes uh, two kayaker, kayakers, and you can see they're not even paddling very hard. One of them has turned over, and he's not even stopped. The boat just gets pushed down through the waves over and over again. And the two go down to the bottom of the first rapid. Here's Billy coming down. He was a, a guy about 230 pounds, and you can see how large his boat is. And here's a kayaker coming down t through the uh, another raft. But notice every time he hits one of these white caps, nothing happens to the boat. He just gets tossed. And the, unfortunately, the third rapid we ran into was an eastern rapid. And what happens here is the wave is so strong and the back curler and the drop is so steep that it takes the boat and just flips it over. And you can see the power of this wave, bam, right there. And he pushes it out and now he needs to get some more speed because he's got another drop. And there he goes, bam. And you can see the wave just holding on to him. And that is not true of most of the waves in the Grand Canyon. Most of the waves, they just have so much power, they push you right through. Here's another person uh, coming down in a kayak, um, and he's coming through House Rock. It's the same rapid, and you'll see the double drop off, and he just doesn't believe uh, that this wave will stop him. He does notice he's not even paddling. He's just holding his paddle in the air. He's kind of floating, and he, he expects to be able to be pushed through the, the hole. But this is a rare one for the Grand Canyon, and takes that boat and flips it, not sideways, but almost end for end. He flips back up just in time, to get nailed by the second hole. And these are, are, these are very interesting because they're not normal for the Grand Canyon. Uh, the water in the Grand Canyon is so powerful, just pushes you through. Now, here's me coming down uh, in a one-man canoe. The reason it's a canoe is because I'm seated and there's a paddle only on one side. Uh, after a while, we take a nice lunch break on the beach. Everybody's resting up and the tour guides uh, prepare the lunch. Here's a view, magnificent view, of the Grand Canyon. And you're, every single day, um, all day, these are the views you get. And you really get this feeling of being down, uh, buried in these walls. Um, here we are, and this is a one-man canoe. This, and he's noticed the paddle only on one side. And notice how the boat is just uh, flying through these waves. And back east, these waves would just stop you and turn you over. But there's so much power in the Grand Canyon that they just push you through. Uh, this is the little Colorado. Uh, the color comes from minerals coming down the creek. It's a spot where we stop for lunch and got a good chance to see a view. And um, the, there were other rafters on the trip, 
So our group, about half our group, stopped off to Little Colorado, and the other half went for a, a hike and spent most of the day hiking. Um, the group um, that stayed, uh, some of the people were rafters and never been a canoe or a kayak. So we gave them a chance to use our boats and learn how to paddle. And here these people are using, notice, uh, learning the techniques of how to use the boat. Right after you get off of uh, Little Colorado, this is an unnamed rapid. Can you imagine? Unnamed. And uh, all there are are white caps and these humongous waves and it's not even a named rapid. Here's Unga. Unga is really interesting. Uh, very difficult to see the boats here because the, the river slams up against the wall. So the waves are actually going left to right. The water goes out and hits the rock and then uh, goes back to the right. So you're, you don't know how to lean your boat because the uh, waves are coming at all these odd angles. And you can see this boater uh, really risking it. The closer you get to the wall, the uh, greater the waves. But it's, um, it's a very difficult thing to control a boat when the waves are coming at you in directions you've never seen before. There, and here's Hans. It's a great rapid to see. Uh, that's a, there are two rocks up at the top. You're supposed to go enter the rapid and then uh, between the rocks and then move to the middle of the river. But the raft doesn't have to do that. The raft can just go wherever it wants because it floats on top of the waves and doesn't go in any of the holes. Uh, uh, notice right there, the wave was, the raft was stopped and uh, then they went, um, continued down the rest of the rapid and um, just uh, floated on top of the water. And now here comes the kayaks and canoes. Uh, first, uh, this kayaker is uh, going on the right-hand side of the river and doesn't go cut back to the middle. S so it seems that this is the easy way to go. Um, but in the middle is where you call the black tongue. And that's where all the water is going to and that's where the power of it is. Well, he stayed to the right and it looks like he's doing a great job, but when he gets to the bottom, that's where he meets the back curlers. And he'll buy it. The river will turn him over right at that point, right there. Uh, he'll, he'll go turn over because he's not in the black tongue. And this kayaker uh, goes and hits the rock. Uh, he tried to get too close to the rock, and he hit it, and he turns over. And here, this kayaker is a little too far to the left, and he almost went into that back curler. Now now he's in the black tongue, right where you belong, right in the black tongue. And here I come in a one-man boat. And this is a bit tricky for me because I have a paddle on one side. So here I am fighting my way to get over to the black tongue. And uh, I'm doing a great job at this point, and I'm almost in the black tongue. Now I have to get the boat turned around and face downstream. And unfortunately, I turned it a little bit too far, and as soon as I did that, the river grabbed the boat and turned it around. And here I am in a total panic, going down the rapids backwards and with one paddle, so really reaching back. And at one point, the river tosses me in the air, so the boat and me are literally up in the air. And then we come back down and um, finish the run. Uh, very lucky that we didn't turn over. Grapevine is an interesting rapid because at high tide, 
when the dam is releasing water, there are no rocks. But all the waves, every single wave you see there, at low tide, when the river, when the dam is not releasing water, are rocks. And uh, uh, Leslie Powell described it as a, a grapevine. And th so there was nothing uh, scary or dangerous about the river at this height because all the river did was just push you downstream. There's a good view of the canyon and you notice the r rapid further upstream. Um, here are the boats coming down through Grapevine and look how easy it is to paddle. They, very few strokes, nobody's digging in very hard. You just nice little lazy strokes and the river is just so powerful that it pushes you on down. Um, this is a, a tremendous amount of water. And that's the uh, lower canyon. And here we are coming into Phantom Ranch, which is the halfway point uh, for the trip. Um, the um, Everybody getting a, a moment of respite uh, at Phantom Ranch. <laughs> 